All right, we're gonna do some FX accuracy today. It's all about accuracy, you know, especially at our new facilities here at FXUSA, we have a 100 yard indoor test range. You're removing all the elements, no wind, pure accuracy. So, uh, by the way, John Brandon from FXUSA, and with the accuracy 35 caliber tension barrel with the new heavy liner system, we're gonna be shooting the 35 cal hybrids. All about accuracy, but I'll pause because we grab this rifle, and, and with the accuracy, we always grab a rifle off the shelf. Of course. Uh, you know, tune it. But then you put, the great thing about the impact is no two impacts are the same, right? You make it your own. It's, it's like the Jeep Wranglers of, of impacts. It's purpose built. <laughs> yes. Right? So what did you do to this rifle? Take us through what we got on Well, here. working from the back to the front, uh, we've got it sitting on a GRS rear bag. Uh, of course, this is the Impact M3 with a 3 to 18 Titan on top. I think this is a mil scope at the moment. Yep. You got a lot of travel oh, or range. I this mean, scope has 150 MOA in it. Wow. That's incredible. I this mean, is, you're right. This is my new favorite. As far as a hunting scope, this is my favorite. Glass is awesome. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. We can go on and on about the scope, but what else yeah. we got? <laughs> well, if you notice, the scope is sitting on the 30 MOA backbone uh, sold at Utah Air Guns. That is incredible. I actually just put one of those on my personal rifle as well. It adds yeah. a lot of rigidity to it, but it also allows for you to put this top mounted GRS bipod on your rail. It's a cool setup. First of all, you mentioned it, Utah Air Guns, that's a, they have their Air Marksman line of accessories. It's a very cool product. Um, we also, I know there, there's other like, um, the Saber Tactical has an extended rail Absolutely. too. The TRS the Crawford rail. and Lip, yep. yep the so this rail. idea of having a lot of room for adding other things like the clip on that you're talking about. But this bipod, we saw this a year ago, and this alone is what really wanted me to get this kind of stuff developed because that top mounted bipod from GRS. So the, the physics behind a top mounted bipod is we're going to keep that weight underneath so the recoil goes straight back in a linear right. standpoint. Now you're saying recoil on an air gun. Well, it's not the same as a firearm, but as you get bigger calibers like this 35, there is some recoil there where it's getting a little bit more hold sensitive. That's really moving it right back versus like a traditional bipod where you kind of have this pivot movement that can throw your accuracy. So, well, you've got lower, lower center of gravity. And then of course you're hanging naturally straight up and down. So you're not fighting can't like you would with a normal bipod. You know who used this and did really well with it? Frederick Axelson at last oh, year's Armac. He got the world record. He crushed it. I yeah. mean, it was incredible. It was, he was incredible using this bipod. Yeah. I was using it, loved it. I saw Matt, a couple others, yeah. and he used it. Awesome bipod. That is my favorite bench bipod. Now there's two things that you haven't seen. There's some new items here that you saw for the first time today, right? And it is mind-blowingly brilliant. So obviously you see our chronograph, the, the, you know, the radar pocket chronograph goes to your phone, but it doesn't go to the phone anymore because look at this little guy. This is a chronograph display unit. It sits right back here on the edge of the, uh, on the back of the impact, or there's a Picadini adapter so you can put it like on other rifles on the side, things like that. Now, don't blow up your dealers yet because we just got them yesterday. Right. We're gonna process them, right. get them out to dealers. <laughs> Give them a week or two. But these, uh, th this little display unit syncs up to the chronograph. It's uh, wireless, or not wireless, it's uh, internal battery so you can charge it with the USB-C kind of right. thing. Um, and then the chronograph rod mount. You, um, a lot of guys use this on the side as well, but that's a new little unit as well. Great little bench setup, especially if you're yeah. tuning, testing, stuff like that. So now available in the coming weeks. Okay, but what we're here to talk about, 35 caliber, the new tension barrel with the heavy liner system. Yes. Now that heavy liner system was perfected. You know, we got this powerhouse of barrel making now. It's not just Frederick and Johan, everybody knows Frederick and Johan. Hein Froman from South Africa. Yes. Uh, Matt Dubber, everybody knows Matt. Air Arms Hunting SA and Rolf Forster from uh, Air Tac Hunting. Yes. That's the secret weapon on barrel making, especially like Hein, his years in the South African Army, I think he was doing uh, tank barrels, right? Like he we're was. talking about ballistics and twists. That and, man has forgotten more about ballistics yeah. than I'll ever be able to learn. There's a reason he came in second place at Armac. Oh. So the tension system was announced in April. Um, it was right. primarily with the, the lower cables, especially the 22, you know, shooting the 40 green slugs. That's what this is, a 22 cal kit. And yes, they are they are available on the market now. There's a lot of demand for these, but there's we're getting them in heavily now. They're they're available on the market. But the 35 caliber is brand new, and the 35 caliber comes much like the other ones. It comes with a heavy liner standard. It does, and uh, you know the thing about it coming with the heavy liner standard and why we're shooting hybrid slugs out of a heavy liner, whereas the rest of our calibers we don't, is as we grow up in in caliber size. Mm -hmm we really have to start having dedicated liners for dedicated projectiles. And so that's part right. of the benefit to the SDX system. So the standard pellet liner, so that's a one in 26 with, you know, you got pellet choking, stuff like right. this. This is a one to 24 twist with obviously 
almost no choking, I think, when it comes to slugs. So different recipe, right? right. Um, and for the hybrids, other projectiles as well. So I know a lot of people are starting to test with other 35 caliber uh, solids and things like that. So, And I also have been testing these 81 grain pro slug solids. Um, now, if you already have a 35 caliber um, uh, impact, you can buy the liner. So you can just buy the liner like anything else, put it in there. It's right. available on 800 and 700 millimeter lengths. But I know a lot of guys, you'll want the tension system. So let's talk about the 35 brass. New Ooh, system. That looks new. Right, everyone. Pay attention. That is brand new. And this, is all, this has been shipping on the 35 caliber for the last couple of months. So if you got a new 35, look at it. This is the new brass. There's only one O-ring because the other O-ring is inside the power block. So all power blocks have another O-ring on there. This new brass system, the reason the change, that allows the projectile, either the slug or, or the pellet, to be seated in the rifling better. So... This is a way where we've really been able to enhance the accuracy of the 35 with that change. Right. So what does that mean to you? If you have an impact and you want to shoot 35 caliber, you need to make sure, at least this new design with new brass, you need to have a rear power block, which if right. you're shooting slugs, you want anywhere. Of anyways, course, right? of course, you want power. Um, you probably already have, if you have the rear block, yeah, buy the tension barrel kit, you're fine. If you have an older impact, and you haven't upgraded, now's a good excuse to upgrade to the power right. block, right? So uh, this comes standard on all the impacts now and all the tensioned barrels. That's that new brass piece. So we will now leave the rabbit hole of technical details. Well, now we gotta get shooting. Yeah, that's why we're here. It's about accuracy. So let's go out to the range. Um, we both shoot 10 shot groups. Yep. And let's let, let the best shooter win. That's basically it. Let's go. <clears throat> I, I will say, <laughs> Technically, we're not at 100 yards today because there's some construction going on right. behind. We had to move forward about 10 yards, so that'll help you. I know you need it. So uh, let's go out and see. 10 shots, hybrids, may the best group win. Let's I, have, I have my thoughts. I have my thoughts. Uh, what did you think of, of how, how did you feel as you shot? I'll tell you what, I really liked having that display up as we were shooting because I could tell the feet per second of my round as it's going down range. And so, you know, it's I knew cool. what to expect and I didn't make unnecessary adjustments. It's great location. Um, you, you bring up a good point. As we mentioned earlier, this is this this gun has maybe had at this point maybe 100 rounds through it. Oh, yeah, just the tune in our 10 shot groups. When you get a new rifle, a new uh, FX, you you need about four to 500 rounds to break in the regulator. Right. How the regulator works is there's kind of like washer sacks in there that flex with the pressure. Yep. Um, those first four to 500, it kind of it's kind of easing in. So between shots, it might be, you know, that's why you get a little bit of standard right. deviation. It'll settle in. I mean, if you look at the, our shots, I think pretty tight standard deviations, but that means over time, it's only gonna get better as we break in the rifle. So right. just keep that in mind. So let's take a look. All right, 10 shot group, uh, 1.057 inches. And uh, you can see that standard deviation is a little, cause we're still breaking it in, 8.25. Then here's yours. Well, now that it was broken in, I shot a 1.054. You're welcome for me Which breaking in I appreciate. I appreciate yeah. you giving me the advantage there. So technically you won, but thanks to me. You know, we're shooting an 800 millimeter barrel, but shooting these 68 grain hybrids, right? So right. 68 grams is not a lot of weight. It's a little lighter than the pellets we sell. Yes. You don't need an 800 to shoot them at the speeds. No. And we'll talk about the speed and the tune. It was, the, the speed was about 960. That's a sweet spot for accuracy. We could do a 700 millimeter, the same speed, no problem. I wonder if that's gonna if you're gonna get the same accuracy or that shorter barrel, meaning less chance for whipping stuff. If that would, help I kind of think up. you know Rick Ream, small tangent, has yeah. a 500 mil 30 cal that is lights out. So I'm yeah. willing to bet that that will actually help. Maybe we got to reshoot. Um, 960 feet per second. Let's talk about the tune. So regulator, so you can do this at home because uh, that's the beauty of the Impact M3, right? Oh, yeah. The quick tune system. So 150 on the regulator, and then uh, take us through what, what do we have on the micro and the macro? Well, on the macro we've got. Let's see, 16, and on the micro, we've got four and a quarter. 
Okay, so four and a quarter, 150 on your second reg. Obviously your first reg is gonna be open, you know, like I think they have those preset at like 180, 190 on the 35 cal. Yep. Don't quote me on that. Um, yeah, shooting at 960. So that'll get you within, uh, then you can fine tune it with that micro. 960 is your sweet spot. Yep. And then you finish with the valve adjustment and you're you're there. Yeah, that that felt really good. Um, there was, as I mentioned earlier, I could feel it. There, there's a little bit of movement and recoil, so you're, you're a little bit more hold sensitive. You gotta make sure you're gripping it the same way. If you're way. going from a 177 to a 35, you'll notice it. Yeah. Okay, so last thing, Brandon. Let yeah. me ask you this. You know MSRP on these in the US, right? Yeah, retail is $29.99. $29.99. I looked up the price of the 35 cal JSB pellets, which count of 100 in their tin. Okay. $21.99. What? These are cheaper than pellets. Why wouldn't you shoot them? I, I agree. Now, I know that the lower calibers, everybody's like, oh, the hybrids are so expensive, but the bigger caliber, you, you, you know, the idea of what makes the hybrid um, a little bit more expensive, it's a two stage thing, right? So you get right. this piece of lead, they carve out a bunch of, you know, almost like have a cup, and then a second stage, they bend it in. So it's a process that there's more expense there, but as you go up, that, that overhead stays the same, and you've got a cheaper slug than pellet, so. Absolutely, there's 100 rounds in that. In your place. Awesome, well, uh, I feel good about this. Uh, we'll see you next week with uh, as we do some more accuracy with some other new goodies. So thanks everybody. See ya. Take care.